Hello students and welcome to a lesson on parametric equations. And before we actually dive into what a parametric equation really is, um, we, let's, we can investigate a quick example here and that says, an airplane takes off at Metro Airport, it gains 300 feet of elevation per second and moves forward at a rate of 500 feet per second. Okay. Now, we have a couple questions we have to answer. First, write an equation for the horizontal movement of the plane with respect to time and draw the graph. Now, before I get too much into um, the first problem here, let's just define a couple of variables. Okay, so let's look at a couple of variables here. I'm going to say that x is the distance and this is horizontal to be perfectly clear and it's going to be measured in feet y is going to be the elevation and this is vertical just to be perfectly clear that's also going to be measured in feet and then finally t is going to be time and we're going to measure it in seconds so if this airplane is in fact moving forward ahead at 500 feet per second, so if it's moving forward at a rate of 500 feet per second, well, we can conclude then that the distance that it traveled is 500 times t. And we can sketch a pretty decent looking graph just from that fact alone. And we'll just go, you know, about five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. This is time in seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And this will be distance, and that's horizontal distance, in feet. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to increment in 500 at a time. So each one of these tick marks should be 500 feet. So we can graph this. After one second, it's 500, It's traveled 500 feet. After two seconds, it's graphed, it's traveled 1,000, and so on, up to five seconds. And that's not the neatest graph, but that's a, actually this point here should be right about there. Okay, so it should give us a, a pretty good picture of what this is doing here. And keep in mind that this is not the path of the plane. This is not the path of the plane. This is a graph of time versus horizontal distance. Let's move on here. And now we have um, an example that asks us, well, what is the elevation? Well, we can do this problem once again without uh, too much trouble. Um, one thing that I do know is that this thing is going to move forward uh, or upwards at 300 feet per second. So y, the vertical distance or the elevation, is equal to 300 times t. And I can also graph this. And we'll go five seconds at a time again. One, two, three, four, five. And again, this is t or time in seconds. And this is elevation in feet. Okay. And this is going by 300. So each of these tick marks is 300. And we can plot these points relatively easily and then we can draw a line through all of the points and again this is also not the path of the plane it just helps us to see um, what the plane is doing in terms of its vertical distance in terms of our elevation and now we get to this uh, third part here that says, draw a graph for the horizontal and vertical mo movement of the plane at the same time. 
And in order to do this, this is a little bit tricky here because we have three variables that we're dealing with here. We're trying to graph three variables okay, on a two-dimensional surface. So to do this, well, let's start out just by making a table. T, X, and Y. And T is going to be between 0 and 5, so I'm going to increment it by 1. I don't have to do incrementing it by 1, but probably makes life a little bit easier. At 0, the plane hasn't moved at all. At 1 second, X should e equal 500, and Y should equal 300. At 2 seconds, X, you plug, plug in 2 here for T, so X should be 1,000, and Y is 600. And we continue filling this out, 1,500, 900, 2,000, 1,200, finally 2,500, and 1,500. And now we can draw our graph. And this is going to be somewhat of an interesting graph. So uh, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we're going to graph x here. This is the distance okay, in feet. We're going to graph y along here. This is the elevation in feet. Okay. One, two, three, four, and five. And the x is going to increment by 300 at a time. Y is going to increment. Oh, I'm sorry. The x is going to increment not by 300, by 500. What am I doing? So this is going to increment by 1,000, 2,000. The Y is going to increment by 600, or each one of these tick marks is going to be 300. And then we can graph this. Uh, at 300, it's going to be, when X is at 300, when X is at 500, sorry, Y is at 300. 1,000 and 600, 1,500 and 900, 2,000 and 1,200. 2,500 and 1,500. And we can draw the line through here, and so on. Okay. Oh, and I shouldn't draw the arrow because it's only between t equals 0 and t equals 5. So let me zoom out a little bit here, and we can sort of compare the graph. And this right here, this is the path of the plane. This tells you where the plane is at. This is the path okay, of the plane. Now, there's a couple issues with this here. We haven't really included time into this yet. So we can include this fairly easily just by writing time. t equals 0. No, sorry, t equals 1 at this point. t equals 2 at this point. t equals 3. t equals 4. And t equals 5. Okay. And the, even though all three of them are, are linear graphs and they're just diagonal lines, um, there is a fundamental significant difference between all of them. And that main difference is that these two here are graphs of time versus distance. And this one here is a graph of distance versus distance. In other words, it gives you the path okay, and the position of the plane at any particular point. And it also tells you how much time gone is has gone by when the plane is at that point. Okay. Now one more thing I just want to try here. Now what if, and this is a, a, you know, a big if, hopefully it doesn't happen, but you know, what if uh, the plane drops 200 feet in elevation at five seconds. Okay. What is going to change now? Well, let's look at these three graphs again. If the plane at five seconds now, the plane suddenly drops down at, um, drops down 200 feet, 
Well, this here is a graph of horizontal distance. So distance doesn't really change. Okay, so the distance continues. The, uh, the horizontal distance now, it just can proceed forward a little bit. Okay. And the vertical distance, though, that definitely changed. Instead of being at this point here, it's going to decrease a little bit. And just for the sake of the argument, let's just say it's six seconds. Okay, let's just say these, hap these things are happening here at six seconds. Okay? So the vertical, the elevation, it's going to drop a little bit at six. Okay? And this point here, just to be perfectly clear, um, it's dropping from 1,500. So this is going to be you know, about 1,300. Six, 1,300. This point up here, it's still going to proceed forward. So it's going to be six. 2500 okay. and let's look at our graph of the position the path of the point what's going to happen to this well we have to add another line to this six right here okay. and remember at six x is at 2500 still and y is now at 1300 because the plane has dropped 200 feet down so this is kind of a weird looking graph, but instead of being at exactly uh, 13, at this point right here, it's going to be at 2,500, 1,300. So 2,500 is here, 1,300 is about right here. Okay? And I'm going to highlight these things that I've added here, just so that you can really see what's happening here. So this picture here tells us, let me cross this out here. I don't want to make this, this up here should just be crossed out. So this graph up here is the graph of time versus distance. This is the graph of time versus elevation. And this is the graph of distance and elevation. And we have to include here that at this point, t equals 6. And if you notice here, um, there's a couple issues. This is a function. This is a function. This one definitely not a function. Okay, but that's okay because one of the things that we want to do in this section and beyond is how do we graph movement of objects or movement of anything that is not a function? And because sometimes those are the most interesting examples. Okay? And this is really sort of the, the motivation for having parametric equations is how do we graph something that uh, isn't, doesn't behave like a function and it involves three different variables. So I'm going to introduce um, the idea of a parametric equation and then I'm going to let you look at some examples of this on the next uh, couple of videos. Okay. So a parametric of equation is a set of equations defi defined using a parameter, and it's usually t, that's the parameter. In two-dimensional space, the graph of the order pair x, y form a parametric curve if x is equal to a function, okay, f of t, and y is equal to a function, um, g of t. So just to draw some parallels here, in the previous example, we have two equations. This is the function. We could say that this is uh, this first one right here. Okay. This is f of t. And this one right here, we could say that this is g of t. Okay. So if you graph both of these equations at the same time, x equals 500t, y equals 300t, Together, you're going to get this graph here. Okay? And that's um, what a parametric equation really is. It's using x and y just like we did before, but using a third variable, usually t, uh, to represent uh, each one of them individually. Okay? And one of the benefits, I should say here, is that we can, we can uh, solve each equation uh, separately. And many times we can ignore the other equation. A lot of times we, we might have to work with both of them, but a lot of times we may be able to ignore um, the other equation. Okay. And so there you have it. This is a very brief introduction to parametric equation. Uh, watch the next videos. and I'll talk more about uh, how to write parametric equations.